Hello and welcome to season 3 of Travel Stories with Marsh. So if you love the world around you and you love exploring different landscapes, cultures, cuisines and cities, then this is the right place for you because here every week I'll be talking to an incredible travel enthusiast who will take us on fascinating journeys around the world by sharing their travel stories. So since the beginning of this podcast, we have been talking a lot about experiential travel and transformational travel. But what do these terms really mean? Is transformational travel just a new trend or is this the next chapter of travel? So for this episode today, let's dive straight into the world of wellness travel and transformational journeys with the queen of life-changing travel journeys herself, Neve Kyohan. Neve is the managing director of We Love Transformational Travel, which is the world's first online booking platform for transformational travel. Neve, it's an absolute pleasure to have you in the studio today. And thank you so much for joining us for this episode of the podcast. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. So, you know, let's begin at the very beginning. Uh, what really is transformational travel? Because, you know, we use the term, but, you know, I feel like there is a lot of people out there who don't really understand this term properly. So yeah. tell us. So there's a few different ways of describing it, but the most simplistic way and, and straightforward way we describe it is transformational travel is any trip or experience of travel that you take that when you come back, your life is better than it was before you left mm -hmm. or the life of someone else or the planet in general. Mm -hmm. So it's about when you're coming home, how are you different? How are you better in some shape or form? So in short, it's really becoming a better version of yourself. Yes. And it also depends on what which point of your life, what point of your life you are at. Yeah. And then you can really choose. Um, there could be things like you've got a new job, uh, you're starting a new business. We have success and leadership trips there that can help people on these stages of their lives. Mm. There's midlife and menopause trips. Uh, and there's andropause trips as well, which mm. we don't talk enough about. It's men's uh, version of, of menopause. Mm. So really something... Um, for every kind of key stage of people's lives, travel can help. And um, there's so so many different kinds of trips that you can choose from. Yeah. But something that's becoming very popular in today's world is um, menopausal travel. Yeah. Why is that gaining so much popularity nowadays? I think we're th we're talking about menopause a lot more, um, and I think mm -hmm. social media has helped amplify that and give. Yeah. kind of uh, more awareness that it is a big chapter in someone's life, in yeah. a woman's life. Yeah. Um, and I think with the retreats um, and the trips that we have, it's very much focusing on not um, kind of, oh, menopause, you know, I need to get through this. Mm. It's more about honoring that next chapter. Mm. So it's bringing women together from mm. all over the world, these trips. Mm. And they have, you know, a lot in common. They can talk about stuff because mm. women are great at doing that yeah. and sharing but with the, the exact right people and very importantly, with the right facilitator mm. um, and expert that can help them um, mm. through this stage yeah. um, and how they're feeling and, you know, help them go back with such a, a different mindset. Yeah. Now, you know, I don't want to digress too much yeah. and just talk about menopause, but I just feel as women, it's so important to talk about how, you know, you can help yourself and probably help somebody else, another yeah. woman going through it, because like you said, people don't talk about it. And if travel can help you in any way, I mean, why not? Mm -hmm. So just tell me, do these trips that you have, menopausal travel trips, do these really help? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of our travelers come back with very positive experiences. Mm -hmm. But the key thing to remember, like all of our trips, is it's up to the traveler, the person going, to make those changes. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, are they honoring when they go home what they said they would do while they were on their uh, retreat right. or their um, their journey. So it's very much up to the individuals, like everything in life. Like everything in yes. life, even when you're sick, if the doctor yes. gives you medicines yeah. and you don't have them, then you don't get better. So yes. so much depends on ourselves. Exactly. Now, you know, of course, this episode is uh, going to be talking about, we'll be talking about a lot of, uh, you know, life-changing journeys and yeah. transformational travel uh, throughout this entire episode. But let me begin with the first question of the podcast. Where will you be taking us? on a journey today oh my goodness there's so many places I would love I'm to sure. take you um I think this one because it's quite recent and quite close to my heart mm -hmm. is I'll take you to Rwanda oh yeah to um 
to trek with gorillas mm-hmm. in Volcano National Park, which was a recent journey. And it was pretty, pretty special. When we arrived in um, Chigali in Rwanda, the capital city, we were struck by the friendliness of everyone and the warmth of the locals and, and kind of understanding what they had been through as, an, as a nation, as a country mm. only 30 years ago. Mm. And how they've healed and how they are, are healing from from that um, horrific um, trauma they suffered. Straight away, we realized the resilience of people. Mm. We were struck as well by how clean the streets were and everything. Yeah. So obviously you have a lovely clean city and mm. streets, but you also have a sense of community, which had been broken so many years before. Um, so yeah, and then going down to, to see the gorilla. So this was a bucket list for us. Um, we wanted to go and see gorillas. Mm. How was this experience? It like, was amazing. Yeah, it really, really was. And um, we set off on our, our hike. Um, the way it's all organized, it's so professional. Mm. Um, they have trackers that are out at nighttime, you know, looking at the uh, where the gorillas are. They have scouts down. Everyone's communicating with mm. one another. Um, mm. And it's quite an operation. They're very strict about the amount of people they bring out to the national park mm-hmm. um, every day, mm-hmm. like down to like the one person they mm-hmm. have it. Everything is organized and they're very strict about how much time you can spend with gorillas. Oh, yeah. It's very important that the gorillas are left alone and the wellness of the gorillas is is um, at the heart of everything. So um, they take you out and you're w- with a group, a small group of people, but you're following a certain family of gorillas. Oh. So that they know who you're who, who you're going to see. So everyone is not seeing the same one or annoying the gorillas at any stage. Mm. So, yeah, we were around, I'd say, an hour into our trek. That's and spectacular. So yeah. you follow a, a family of gorillas. Yeah. And yeah. But the gorillas are never intimidated by you being there. No, so the the way the 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 national parks and the organizers there have are manage it is spectacular. So they they kind of rehabitualize um the gorillas over years just to get get used to humans. Mm-hmm. The trackers and the guys that we were with know the language of the gorillas. So they know wow. and they can like, communicate with them and so there's 16 different um I suppose vocal noises that yeah, they use yeah. to communicate. Uh, I, I would do that. That's <laughs> but, amazing. Yeah, they know if the gorillas are um, angry, are getting sad, angry or, or they're okay. starting. And, the, and the only thing the gorillas really get angry about is when the babies are at a, a mm, threat disturbed. or at a risk. Yeah, yeah that's a, yeah. really the only thing. Yeah, um, which is fair. Yeah, I mean, which is fair yeah, enough. Yeah. Like like all yeah, of us. All of us. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, we were pretty much. Um, uh, we saw our first gorilla. Um, around an hour in and he was a young this is a very goosebumpy oh moment goodness. oh my um, god a young black back male mm-hmm. and he was just eating you know mm. and I was like oh my god this is amazing um, like we were quite close close to him um, and then the guide asked us to move on and I was like oh but like, can mm. we stay and look and then he brought us around a couple of trees I suppose and there was a family of around 13 to 15 gorillas from your silverback to your blackbacks, to the females, to babies, all just sitting around in a circle. And um, they just after eat, wow. after having their lunch. So they were just kind of, it was like, you know, Christmas dinner in Ireland after everyone's finished and everyone's just oh. kind of lying back. And, and how far are you from you, them? We were like, oh my goodness, um, a few meters. Um, you don't get, you know, they're, they're quite... Um, conscious of how close you get but because we were in a kind of a closed area there was mm. no choice but for us to be quite close to them mm. um, and we were just allowed sit there sit with them observe you almost what feel you like sit with them just like, observe almost, oh and it's and you the thing is I was quite conscious I wanted to get photos and footage and everything like we all yeah, do yeah. but then you're like I don't want my phone in front of my face yeah, while you're you here you want to absorb yeah. it all yeah you're sitting here with these amazing creatures who are weirdly so like us you know with their hands and, and their... so very few of them left yeah. in the world today yeah, yeah well because of these kind of um, trips um, mm. conservation trips they're helping grow the, the population yeah. again yeah. which is another which falls into our purpose and impact section mm-hmm. where you're actually mm-hmm. impacting um, the conservation of, of these mm. amazing uh, animals. Um, so, yeah, we sat there with them um, watched them, watched the kids play mm. um, and watched them just living. And it's quite an exercise um, of just being present and being mm. there, being very, very grateful to be able to sit and, and mm. watch this yeah. Happening. I was a little bit scared at first because they're big, but the, the guides are so good that they mm. know 
they know everything about them. Mm. They've observed them for many years and studied them for for many years. Uh, and the guides are making noises. There is a particular noise. I won't do it now because it'll sound very strange. <laughs> but there's just to tell them that it's cool. Yeah, We're cool. Yeah. And and they're used to this, you know. Um, and it's a very respectful kind of meeting. Yeah. You're watching them. Mm. They're going about their business. And you kind of this, it's nice. Uh, once you kind of are like, okay, this is safe. Yeah. You know, everything yeah. is okay. And you settle in. You and settle you... in. And we just sat on the grass. Yeah. And I was just like watching. And um, the babies are like human babies mm. playing. The mother's like, you know, come on, get up, you know. Yeah. Um, how, how nice, how incredible. That is an amazing journey yeah. into, you know, into Rwanda and yeah. especially a journey to see the gorillas. Mm. So, you know, let's talk a little bit about longevity, mm. you know, um, because that is becoming a big thing that we talk about. It's a huge topic nowadays yeah. in today's world. And there are gadgets uh, that people wear, you know, just to check whether their heart rates are proper, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And again, that's a whole different conversation altogether. But I want to talk about longevity and wellness travel and mm -hmm. how these two are connected and why, as somebody who's so involved with transformational travel, how do you think that these kind of trips and journeys help in longevity for people today? We're, living, we're more lonely than ever before. We're on our devices. We are, yeah. um, people are lacking purpose. Mm -hmm. They're looking for fulfillment in places that you're not going to get it. And travel can actually help with these mm. these kind of issues or modern day issues that we have. You know, um, getting out into nature, going outside without your device, mm. you know, it can help reduce stress, mm. anxiety, you know, which lengthens your life if yeah, you live with, yeah. without too much stress. Um, going to retreats or um, on trips with other people. Social connections improve and lengthen our lives mm. and help people with loneliness as well. Yeah. Uh, and then you have the even more basic is if you're learning healthy habits while you're away, mm. you know, even if, if you're going on a, a detox or a health retreat and you learn these habits and you take them back and that lengthens your life as well. Yeah. Um, there's so, so many ways and, and I think it's so simple, right? Yeah, exactly. And yet so scientific in a way, because when you're happy, you are less stressed. Exactly. So, you know, all of that, we talk about cortisol level coming yeah. down and all of that. So, you know, when you go on a trip like that and you're de-stressed and you feel so much better about yourself and the world around you, so automatically, you know, there is a connection to longevity, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Even finding purpose. Yeah, so true. Yeah. But, you know, Neve, you've probably been on so many of these transformational journeys. So what, which according to you has been the most mm. unforgettable you know, a transformational trip for you? Ooh, that's a hard one. Yeah. I it's knew you were going to ask choose. me some tough questions. It's very difficult to choose. Mm. Right. There was a trip that um, my husband and I took, which I remember for so many different reasons. We went to Indonesia, to Sumatra, northern Sumatra. There's a place there called Bukit Luang. I wasn't that adventurous back then. When I look back, it was my mid-twenties. I was probably like, oh, you know, I don't want to go out into the wild or anything like that. Mm. But and we ended up trekking in the jungle mm. um, with orangutans all around us, mm. sleeping in the jungle. I, I felt a bit nervous going because mm. um, it was a very quiet area. There was no tourists. It was just us out on our own in the jungle with our guide. And, and you were camping. In we the, were in camping. But when I say camping, I mean just lying down in oh. the jungle. Yeah. <laughs> I think we had a black sack or something that we were lying wow. on, and maybe something, a cover over our heads. And I was petrified of snakes at the time. I was petrified of everything, actually, when I look back. Yeah. And I remember feeling like I'm really scared. But then afterwards, I remember feeling I can, I did that, mm. you know? Yeah, it was something that kind of unlocked an adventurous side of me that I didn't know that I had. Mm. And I think I just had myself in this little box. It was before we started traveling too much. I was like, oh, I don't really do, you know, wild mm. um, journeys or adventures. You um, discovered a side of I you which you didn't it. know you exactly. had. Exactly. Yeah. But also it was a turning point for me just being up in the jungle. Mm. Um, we saw... So many different gibbon monkeys, orangutans in the wild, mm. like uh, unbelievable stuff. And um, that was a pretty much a turning point for me as a person. Well, definitely. That that must have been a really, really un unforgettable trip yeah. for you. Yeah. And that's why that one in particular is, is, as you said, unforgettable. Yeah. Now, you spoke about going to Indonesia at the time. We spoke about Rwanda. But when it comes to choosing a favorite destination, 
Which is your favorite destination and why? I've gone to many far flung destinations, mm. but time after time, I find myself back in Spain for so many different reasons. Um, so we have so many partners, transformers there. So lots of fitness camps, which I love to do. And mm. um, there's a lot of them scattered all over Spain. You can learn how to kite surf in Spain. Mm. There's amazing walking adventures and tours kind of in mid Spain as well. Holidays that you can do there. Mm. You can learn how to cook in the Basque region. You can, you know, tap into your more spiritual side in Ibiza. Um, we have yoga retreats in beautiful Mallorca. So I, I, I think Spain would Spain, be Spain, and I got married in Spain. Oh, which, of course, special <laughs> reason. Never forget yeah, that. Yeah. But it, there, there is, and I, I don't want to say it's my favorite destination, but it's a destination I find myself and our travelers and our clients go to a lot um, mm -hmm. because it's so diverse yeah and it has all of these different offerings yeah um so in that sense from volume of, of trips um spain is definitely the winner so you know neve let's let's talk a little more about um transformational uh, trips because you know this is about you know this whole episode i want to really dedicate to all sorts of you know life-changing uh, travels and trips and if you know, we can just pass the word out there and help yeah. at least one listener. I think, you know, that would be really great. So f since you you have been in this for a while now, what, according to you, is that one particular trip that one should take in their lifetime, once in their lifetime at least? Ooh, that's a good question as well. You have <laughs> great questions, Mush. <laughs> and again, it's like trying to pick a child in this one. There's so many in different stages of people's lives. But if people, if, if a client comes to me or a traveler comes on the platform and feels like they need to get away, mm. they're not really, you know, there's no specific issue like mm. menopause mm. or grief. Um, they want to get away. They want to work on themselves. They want to work on their body, their mind, their eating um, and meet new people. Yeah. Um, the body camp in Spain is a, uh, one of our long-term partners. So it's a plant-based uh, retreat. And for people who aren't plant-based, it's it's a good experiment. For a week, it's not a long time. Mm. Food is amazing. Um, so no sugar, no dairy, no alcohol. And you're out in nature. You're exercising every day. So it's kind of got a bit of a 360 and you're also meeting new people from all over the world mm. so it's very good for solo travelers as well mm. most i think 95 percent of their guests would be solo travelers uh coming together uh, for a week in a villa um in mallorca in spain it's, okay. it's run by amazing people um kate and rick and and anthony and they do an amazing job ben well the chef um and so it's, I would it's recommend a no brain. It. You highly recommend it. I would it. recommend that. Okay. Yeah. So the body camp in Spain yes. comes highly recommended yes. by Neve. So who, for anybody who's listening and wants to go on that trip, please get in touch with Neve yes. for this one. Of course, all Neve's details will be on the show not show notes um, of this episode. So please get in touch if you want to. So Neve, let's talk about hidden gems now. Ooh. Yeah, let's let's talk about what is your hidden gem. Mm. It's actually one of our newest uh, experiences that, that mm -hmm. has come on I, because I got to try it myself in January. It is a, it's called the Dreaming Retreat. Oh, yes. tell me more. And it's in Wales. and In England? In England, in the UK, wow. yeah. It's, um, it's. A very special place. Um, it's been, it was founded by Charlotte Church. She founded this beautiful escape in the Welsh countryside. It's like a fairy tale when you arrive. It's an old, old house in the Welsh countryside. So it takes you a little while to drive there. Mm -hmm. So you're already starting to unwind on your journey. When you're in the Welsh countryside, it's very beautiful. Yeah. Um, you've got all the farms and the greenery. Yeah. It's just like you're transported to a different world. It's like you're in a movie. It's like you're in a movie, but a very relaxed movie where nature is just everything. So she's surrounded in um, by these forests. There's these beautiful natural waterfalls coming down in this house. The house is decorated beautifully. There's no clocks, which is great. No, Sounds not like too many mirrors. Yeah, yeah, not too many mirrors. Um, all the food again is foraged from around. They have amazing chefs, plant based, mm. um, and I think there's some if you have requirements for um, 
meats, I think they can accommodate accommodate that as well. Mm. But it's all very organic. I think they're almost 100% self-sufficient on the, the grounds of it it's, as well. We did hiking around in, in the forest. Mm-hmm. We did some forest bathing. We did an amazing sound bath that night. Um, and then they have, as I said, the, the waterfalls coming into like natural pools. So you're cold dipping there, which is pretty cool. So you, cold. Call, this, you call this a dreaming retreat? It's, the, the retre- it's called the dreaming, the house where oh, it is. Oh, the dreaming. Yeah. Okay. So it's you go the dreaming. Yeah. There's three night retreats twice a week. Um, so the dreaming in Wales, in, in Wales, the UK, is yeah. your it's little a, it's hidden, a hidden gem. gem. And also, which is really important, is there's no Wi-Fi at certain times of the day. So when yeah. you find yourself not being able to scroll, yeah, that changes your you life. You need that as well yeah. in 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 today's yeah. world. Yeah, yeah, that's incredible. It is. I'm very I would very highly intrigued. recommend it. You know, I I would just before I go to my next question, I think some one question which would be important for people out there yeah. to know is: Are these retreats expensive? They re- <laughs> they range from. We have a boxing camp Mm -hmm. uh, in Spain where you go for a week and you learn how to become a better, stronger boxer, fitter, meet new people, which starts at around 800 euros um, a week per person. And all of that is included, your accommodation, your food. But then we have trips that will go up to maybe $3,000, $4,000 a week, Mm -hmm. um, depending on where you are. We're not luxury Mm-hmm. There's, you know, uh, um, it's not a budget trip, which needs to be considered yeah. also. You're yeah. not going to get the level of expertise that you'll get from mm. our, the transformers or the facilitators. They have 20 years experience, more experience in, in, You're in helping people. You're investing in yourself. Yeah. This mm-hmm. is an investment in you mm-hmm. and you're paying for a huge amount of skill mm-hmm. Um from the, the facilitators as well. So. so it's good to know that, you know, yeah. if you're investing in yourself, then yes. you need to be aware that, you know, these kind of tri- trips will not really be cheap. But no. then it depends on what you're looking for exactly. at the same time. Exactly. So that's good to know. Yeah. But also now, you know, we've been talking so much about wellness, but there's another kind of travel, mm-hmm. responsible travel. What do you do for responsible travel and what is it that you would want to say to the listeners out there that they should do as far as responsible travel is concerned? I suppose making sure that they're in destinations that mightn't require too much travel to get there or, you know, maybe slower forms of travel. Yeah, restricted. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's there's trains involved as well, which is quite nice. So slowing down that whole pace Mm -hmm. of travel. Um, But yeah, as a platform, we're quite lucky that our partners are very, very conscious of that. And there is a particular partner, um, Jewel Sampson, who's one of our remarkable transformers, Mm -hmm. um, whose company Reclaim Yourself, um, really focus on sustainability and responsible travel in every single trip that they have. They hold yoga retreats in extraordinary places, but only in places that use less carbon footprint to get there, slow travel. And that's really at the forefront of what she's doing. So she's really driving that space with Mm -hmm. even in within the transformational space, she's driving the responsible travel part of it as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And they do great work. That's amazing. I mean, amazing to also know that these ambassadors Mm -hmm. for the earth are there. And, you know, and it's so important that we all do our little something for responsible travel. Yeah. You know, so, you know, for 2024 now, Mm -hmm. travel is becoming huge than ever. You know, there are so many places. I mean, everybody's on like, you know, after COVID, everyone's just traveling and all the airlines are obviously doing very well. But according to you, which is that one place that one must visit in 2024? Oh, so I think given the year of 2024 Mm -hmm. and given it's the best year in 20 years to see the Northern Lights, Mm -hmm. I would highly, and it's on my list for the end of this year as well, is to go up to Northern Scandinavia or Iceland or Greenland to see the Northern Lights. Mm -hmm. I think um, between October 2024 and mid-2025, they're at the most vivid than they have oh, been for two decades, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. a brilliant recommendation. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so all those countries, Norway, yes. Sweden, Finland, all yeah. of these countries. And we have trips for all of those places. We work with a partner called Lost Horizons, who brings people up into Norway, Sweden, Finland, Fabulous. Greenland, Iceland, uh, for beautiful and very, very sustainable 
responsible trips yeah, as well that yeah. partner is fabulous yeah. fabulous yeah. that's on my list too yes so um now what's next on your uh bucket list what are you looking forward to next in travel mm-hmm. Colombia is really on my radar and it mm-hmm. keeps popping up in different places and we've also just got an amazing partner from Colombia as well um on board who does a lot of food um culinary experience culinary classes but with local farmers in Colombia oh. as well so you're uh, getting to know the local community you're learning how to cook amazing food because mm-hmm. Colombia is renowned for it. it's it's fantastic food mm-hmm. um, and then all that vibrant energy there's a lot of creativity and self-expression trips there like dancing that mm-hmm. we'll get on as well so Colombia is on my radar as is Antarctica mm-hmm I would really love to go on an expedition. We have another partner as well, Jennifer Crows, who does amazing expeditions out to Antarctica. And there's one this at the end of this year as well. Um, so they're the kind of two that I, I, I think Colombia is, is, is going to be big for um, everyone in the UAE. Yeah. When yeah. when Emirates starts going. This is exciting. And yeah. these are very, very exciting trips. Yes. You know, I am, I'm totally, you know, encouraged to take that uh, flight to Colombia yeah. now, you know. Yeah. So this was wonderful, Neve. I mean, thank you so much for taking us on these thank beautiful you, journeys around the world on these really amazing life-changing journeys and um, I hope you know people who are listening get inspired to take these journeys with you or with anybody you know and just go and you know in, get inspired and explore for themselves what transformational trips are all about thank so, you so thank much. you so much and I wish you all the best with all the fantastic stuff that you're doing and I hope you get to go to Antarctica and you go to Colombia and you also go and see the Northern Lights this year yes, there's a lot there <laughs> there's a lot on the list but I hope you will do it and I wish you all the best and please continue you doing what you're doing thank you so much Mosh and thank you so much for using your platform for oh. such a, a great uh, cause and spreading the word thank you thank, thank you, so, you much. so much Neve. <laughs> thank you everyone for joining us today I hope our conversations have fueled your wanderlust and inspired you to explore the world in new and exciting ways please don't forget to click on that subscribe button if you haven't already and let us know what you thought of today's episode Until the next time, safe travels and keep exploring.